to get live. Yeah, so now we are live. Uh, thank you uh, again for waiting and sorry about this. So we have Richard Wilson with us, who is going to talk about mortality dashboard, which has 25 years of experience in uh, R and in the data analytics. So we are really thrilled to hear from him. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen and Richard will let me know when I need to switch slides. So thank you and over to Richard. So you're going to get lots of next slide, please, but you'll just have to bear with that. Sorry about that. So we had some sort of bizarre echo thing going on. So next slide. So we sort of picked up this. Um, so in terms of moving forward, I just thought it would be interesting because I think I'm the oldest presenter on the conference this week. We're debating that this morning, but it's a very non-linear path to R. So I started programming with ZX80 back in 1980 when predominantly most of you probably weren't born in natural fact. So it's been going a long way, but I did my first web server back in 1994 and did lots of stuff with Excel, um, SQL, but really when moved to the NHS, of course, started with Excel, but I come to R only in the last nine months because that's the only time I had time to invest in learning about it. Next slide. Um, so in terms of the why mortality, well, many of you might remember the Midstaff's inquiry, and mortality ratios were brought into focus in terms of the headlines like the 13,000 died measly at 14 worst NHS trusts and at the um, Midstaff Trust in the top left, top right hand corner. Um, it's one of those areas where the NHS trusts tend to buy lots of services like Dr Foster or HED um, or myself, I7, to come and understand the data. But in actual fact, most of the data needed to understand mortality, especially the shimmy, is freely available and can be downloaded from an NHS digital website or through the shimmy extract service if you want to do record level stuff. But many trusts struggle with this or do they intend to do too much analysis or too little. And just as we like machine learning on R, and this has been a data science course, this is probably the longest and largest running algorithm in the NHS. It's a logistic regression process. It's been running for about 10 years. So it's a very interesting problem in terms of understanding machine learning as well. So next slide. So in terms of the next slide, please. Sorry about this. So in terms of dashboard solutions, we have the usual suspects um, and the usual suspects being Excel, Tableau, Power BI and ClickView and other visualizations. And this sort of slide just gives you an idea of the sort of ways you can approach reporting mortality in terms of visual suspects. So we've got this Excel single page with all the lovely charts presented. Um, each chart will be a separate render. Um, we have my Tableau resource, which is on online public, which is a very visual um, tool. It's very nice, it's nice. I love it. Um, and you also have like the Power BI tool from NHS Digital. Next slide, please. But each of these come with pros and cons. So Excel, we know the sort of pros and cons from Excel. It's ubiquitous, it's a Microsoft stack, everything nicely works together, allegedly. Everyone knows how to use it, or they know how they use it. And it's great for scrapbooking um, visual ideas. It's fast to cheap, it's very flexible. Um, and it's paper ready in terms of you can cut and paste. The cons is that different versions have different charting options. I did a lovely forest plot in one of my visualizations to get to the trust and Excel said, because uh -uh, I was using Office 365 and they're on Office something like 16 or something. There's very little interactivity. You can't roll over and it's very difficult to do on chart filtering to select bits of chunks. They tend to get very huge very quickly which means they're easy to corrupt, lack of version control, difficult to work, all those usual suspects we expect with all the challenges with Excel. And if we look at things like visualization tools on the next slide, um, just wait for the slide to change, um, in like Tableau, well, these are glorious graphics. It's desktop publishing quality, they've invested heavily in how you present information. It's simple, it's drag and drop or click and point and click. It's pixel perfect. Every single pixel in Tableau, I know exactly I can put something there and use it. I can put anything, if I want the, the chart to start on row on pixel 891 and go, I can do that. I can do it to exact pixel. There's lots of things around automation now in terms of the stack flow, things like Tableau getting better and better every time. Um, you can share the workbooks. And they are very much focused on digital first, which is a challenge for the NHS because most of the NHS is still paper friendly. And that's one of the challenges with sort of things like Tableau and other visualization packages because there's an additional cost in terms of licensing. There are new skills, predominantly around the data wrangling because they like to have the data in a certain format. 
Um, they're not print friendly because they're digital first. And it's not easy to transfer packages. I can show you how I solved the problem, but to do that in yours, you're going to have to rebuild it from first principles and try and unpick why certain things work. Um, so in that respect, you get what you're given. So in terms of R, well, in terms of the pros and cons of R on the next slide, well, I'm not going to fill these in just now because we're going to talk about those later. So on the next slide, we now start talking about why Flex Dashboard. Well, to be honest, I was doing a big piece of work in Markdown. I saw the option and thought, well, maybe I should give it a go because if I could replicate my Tableau dashboard in R, I save myself a thousand pounds a year on a user license and I can share it more easily because Tableau Public is a bit limited and where I can push this out in HTML or on our pubs and I can share it much more easily. So I thought, well, I'll give it a go and see how we got on in terms of that idea of replicating that Tableau view in R. So in terms of the next step, when you go around, so I'm not going to spend too much time on Flex Dashboard because if you've done those talks this week, you've heard lots about our markdown and it's fantastic in terms of what it can do. Um, but this is going to be focusing on the Flex Dashboard element of it. So we'll look at that, but it's easy to find. You just go to new and um, template and there, there you can find Flex Dashboard and you can just get started. So building the dashboard, so the next slide. So in terms of building the dashboard, and um, next slide again, there's a six step plan to creating a new dashboard. First is setting up the purpose, then doing the design, the build, the test, the deployment, and the maintaining integration. So in terms of purpose and audience, this dashboard is very much about focusing on the key measures related to the streaming. It's not about going into patient level data. So I'm not looking to do lots of interactivity with this because this is an explanatory dashboard, not an exploratory dashboard. So there's not going to be a need for lots of filtering because this is my user is basically a single purpose user. It's for assurance and governance purposes, not for understanding what's going on in a large degree. So this is trying to take a user like a medical director, a board director, or a deputy to show them the shimmy methodologies and show them the indicators and not give them too much information. So it's a picture on a page, one trust per dashboard, so there's no filtering trust because that's not necessary for these people it's not their role to look at every other trust in the country that's one of the things trusts get into trouble with is trying to benchmark across the country um, this is not for analysts or clinicians because they need more granular data and there's a whole different flex dashboard for that um, at record level using the shimmy extract data but so there's another dashboard that does that so this is very much for that assurance governance piece next slide so in terms of planning the dashboard, the content's pretty easy. It's what you can download from the NHS Digital website. So it's all about deaths, coding, conditions on admission, place of death, mission level. It's a trust level and site within trust and condition level within trust. And it's got monthly updates. So next slide. In terms of design, the key factor about designing any dashboard is this F-shaped this, this F -shaped approach. So on the table on the left, on the right hand side, you can see this is from Stephen Few, who, of course, we all follow very much in terms of digital visualization. But if you want to bury information, you bury it in the bottom right hand corner. On the slide pack. So you want to put all your best information, top information, top right, uh, sorry, top left in the corner, which is basically how you read a document. So in terms of the design, sorry, focus on the top left where you want to put most of the information. The next stage is the size of dashboard. And this is more important than anything else because um, you've got to work out how you build a dashboard to fit screen size. And of course, we all work on different screen size. On my right hand, on the left hand side, I've got a 4K screen. And in front of me, I've got a, a 15 inch um, laptop. And of course, it renders differently. So I've had to set a dashboard size. And I've set it about 1,000 by 800 pixels because height is more important than width because that's the bit which varies. So, and the idea is to try and keep everything in a single screen and then keep it in a line of sight with no scrolling because I don't want people to have to scroll to find information because often they won't look because, of course, that F-shaped thing becomes so important because if it's scrolling, they're not going to see it. And if it drops off the screen, you might as well lose it. So the workflow, this is basically the workflow. The data comes in. It gets brought together with historical data and RDS files. It constructs a CSV file for Tableau, so that goes to Tableau Public. And the RDS files go to the Flex dashboard and there's various other files around the functions. And that all gets pumped out as a HTML format. So in terms of the next slide, you might remember yesterday, Tom's slide and the work of Emilia Reader on the, the structure of uh, Markdown documents. So I followed her dot structure because I thought it was really helpful. 
And this is what you'll see on the GitHub, the folder structure, and actually the markdown structure as well with YAML, library, source, data, lots of data wrangling, and loads of visualizations and fixed text. So that's my structure, which I'm not gonna go into great detail. So what I'm gonna do now is just go through two pages in the document. There's actually um, five pages in the dashboard. And obviously markdown starts with YAML, and the bits I want to pick up here are just two bits really, is the Cosmo theme. So themes, we've talked about themes before. You can have, it's very easy to change the color of the dashboard just by changing the theme. Um, the Cosmo one works quite well because it's very close to the NHS view. Um, the other key issue is this orientation of rows. So I've built my dashboard in rows, going down a page. Um, you can do columns, but also you can then bed rows, and, columns in rows and rows in columns. Um, there is a parameter. If you remember the penguins from yesterday, there's my params for trust. And this is the RQW, this is a trust um, default. But there's a slide in the longer um, pack, which takes you through a parameterization process, um, which is really easy. It's about 10 lines of code, and you can do that every single trust in the country very quickly. Um, you can stick a logo in, um, and I've used this on my own, but it's, a ve it's not a vector image. So it's not like a PNG file, which shrinks and goes up and down in size. It's a fixed size and it will go pixelated. So again, it's about not being completely desktop publishing quality in regards to the work in um, Tableau and others. So that's the YAML. So on the next slide, we'll start getting into the data wrangling. There is a lot of data wrangling because although the data structure we you anticipate being quite clean coming from digital, there's lots of changes. Lots of variables change across the year, trust merge, trust site changes, Trust use different codes between different years. Um, some of the changes between plots require you to change variable names to be user friendly. And I'll show you something about that later. But also there's lots of pivoting requirements between changing from long to wide and wide to long, depending on how you want to set the dashboard. So there's lots of gymnastics going on within the data set in terms of pivot. And that's why I was very impressed when Zoe was talking about pivots in SQL earlier this week, because it is all about that pivot. It's really key that you use that effectively. So when we get into the actual dashboard on the next slide, this is the first page. And you'll see it's predominantly because most of the people work, I work with want to just know what is the um, shimmy this week. So this page does a lot of that. It just tells you exactly what's going on with the shimmy and some tables just to give you the numbers. You'll see the circles. And what I've done throughout this is link the circles throughout to the text to the dashboard so you can see how it how, it, how it's rendered so how is this rendered on the next slide um this is basically the wireframe on the right, left hand side this is what i was aiming for so i was aiming for a title and a box which was 600 pixels wide and 400 pixels wide to capture the table and text and that's how it's rendered in markdown so there's a bit of a top starts the page so summary says what the page is going to be so that's summary and the orientation for that page. It sets the column width and the, um, the two column widths. And there's the R, which just starts talking about the embedded iterative literal programming side of things in many respects. And most of this page is driven by literal programming. So you can see here that what that page looks like, one sentence is actually driven by a huge chunk of code. Um, and we could use child documents to shorten this because this code is quite long already. Um, but you can see how that, for this trust, you can see how I've been able to set the shimmy for the trust, the date range, this number, a condition about whether it's as expected or worse, and how it compares to a previous period. So that whole section of shimmy text is all conditionally delivered from text like this. Next slide. So on page two, this is the meat and drink of a dashboard. So this is really where all, lots of the information lies. Um, and here you can see I've got three rows, A, B, C. Um, one of the challenges is the value box is a default for um, a flesh dashboard. And it takes up too much real estate because as you use some different screen size, that is fixed pixels. And therefore it takes up a lot of pixel size. It doesn't size change. And that's a real problem um, in terms of different data, uh, dish dashboard size because it becomes more and more important in terms of real estate size and it will squeeze the other charts. So how does this page look? Well, on the next slide, um, you can see how this sort of renders. So the, as I say, the left-hand side shows you the wire. Sorry, frame. Richard, can you please try to um, finish in five minutes? Sorry about this. Yeah. Okay, so that's the wireframe. 
and on the left on the right hand side is the markdown in terms of how it was all put together so you'll be able to see how that works oh wait a minute that's so next slide the little uh, black thing marks where you can jump between pages one of the challenges we've got is actually the um, choice of charts you can use plotty or ggplot rendered through ggplotty but the big challenge is the interactivity plotty is much better for interactivity um, especially with the title the um, rollover where you can see the title here is much more um, natural language in the plotty version because you can actually set the text using HTML, whereas you can't use ggplot and you have to change the variable names to actually make that look right. So the variable names have to be um, as you want them presented. So you couldn't just use shimmy or um, the value. So it, it's easier to use it that way. So on the next slide, the bigger challenge is actually how you render it. So you'll see in the tab set, there's different ways of presenting the data. So I've tried to use subplot, facet and ggarrange. Now these lead to problems. Well, I won't go for each of the problems because I laid out on the left-hand side, but as you can see, using the different arrangements, you get a different presentation of the charts. And that's a real problem because it's not what you see is what you get. Um, what your problems is not often what you get. So legends move around and also the size doesn't quite work. So it's a real challenge when you do that in um, Flex dashboard. So next. Um, in terms of therefore deployment, there's no issues with browsers, although Safari doesn't do point on tilt it on hover, it does it on click. But you should be able to use mobile with Flex dashboard and only four pages come out fine. The big dashboard page doesn't come out right. So there's a real challenge about how you do mobile, go mobile. Tableau is easy this because you can predefine pixel um, previews and you can build it in Tableau much more effectively. Um, so that's one of the challenges is go mobile is a nightmare. Um, next slide. So in terms of pros and cons, well, R is free. It's great for collaboration. I've learned lots and you can see lots of the influences from Tom's slides and various things through this. And it does allow me to do the whole workflow in one preparation and therefore not jumping between apps to pass things around. Sometimes it's brilliant and does things better. The funnel plots are a lot easier to construct in R using funnel plot R from Chris. Um, it took me quite a bit of challenge to get them to um, tap low. It did in the end, but it's Richard, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop you now, but not, 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 not obviously because the technical time, the time is run yeah, out. Yeah. But Richard, thank you so much, and of course you've got, you've shared all the work. Um, yeah. I think uh, we are going to have to move to the next session, please. Otherwise, we will just cascade uh, uh, further. So, just a big round of applause for Richard, and do follow up with Richard, by the way, for any questions. Uh, there are some in the chats, Richard. I'll post them to you. Uh, so you can at least see what they are. Thank you very much, everybody, and see you in the next session, please. Thank you.